You're with Julian on the brown note, and Facebook won, Australia nil. Now, <laughs> with the dust settling on the news media bargaining code Battle Royale, both Facebook and the Australian government have declared victory. Rubbish. If a government threatens and insists it's introducing new laws to punish you, and you threaten them back, and then they say, okay, we're not introducing the new laws, the government lost. Now, the only people to tell us this in Australia, in the largest media organisations such as Channel 9 and the Murdoch Press, who own virtually all the media, are the people who asked for the code and the people that lost. They're not going to tell us. You'd think that this ginormous event that just happened would be all over the news, especially seeing as the news is now allowed back on Facebook, and yet we're seeing next to nothing about it. So if you missed it all, last year Australia, because the Liberal Party is so in bed with the Murdoch press and with Channel 9 who own, or 9 Media who own the Sydney Morning Herald, they do the bidding of the media companies and the media do the bidding of the Liberal Party. And with a cheap Scotty from marketing at the helm, you can't get much more news media friendly than that. So they introduced this media bargaining code whereby uh, media news outlets could then force Facebook to give them their money. This is like trademark analogy time. You've got a lemonade stall, you're the news media. You're not doing too great. Facebook opens up the world's largest, most successful fairground down the road from you. Millions of people go every day. So you go there for free and set up your lemonade stall. You start selling a lot of lemonade at their fairground and for free and voluntarily. And then you turn around to the fairground and say, give us some of your money. Give us insight into your customers. Give us a 28-day warning when you're going to change any legislation. And I mentioned last week when I did a piece on this astonishing event that transpired that our media aren't telling us why it was so contentious that Facebook took this amazing unprecedented act of blocking access to all news media in Australia. It was because of the idea that they had to give them money for something they're doing voluntarily that already makes them a lot of money. The idea that all of the legislation wasn't being looked at, the way that it attacked public broadcasters, the fact they wanted the impossible 28-day warning to any algorithm changes on search results for Facebook or Google, which no one in the world gets, that would be treated completely separately, and the precedent it would set for Facebook and Google elsewhere. Now, Facebook took an astonishing step of blocking the news media. This was an incredible moment. I just laughed tremendously and i said last week about how wonderful facebook was without the news and now the news has come back i don't feel like i'm getting any news to be honest you think that once this stush was over we'd suddenly get this amazing amount of information about one of the biggest tech media stories in history virtual silence josh frydenberg the guy leading the government's call said basically they were super happy well with what Facebook agreed and Mark Zuckerberg spoke to him. So they're happy to see what transpires and not use their media bargaining code. This is a media bargaining code they were insisting on implementing that they're now not implementing at all. They have just reserved the right in the future to implement it. And Facebook reserves the right in the future to block the news again. So they lost completely. And this is the spin they're putting on it. It's the same as what happened with Google. The government is saying that media entities are making deals for cash with Facebook. This is true, but it's got nothing to do with the media bargaining code. Like with Google, Facebook are using a new service, a tab called Facebook News, where they're signing deals for original content with news media providers all around the world. That is what has happened here. It's got nothing to do with the media bargaining code. It has nothing to do with paying them for content that you see in your feed. It's paying them for original content that they're then housing in this Facebook news app. Nothing at all 
to do with the media bargaining code that the government just capitulated on. So don't believe the hype. We cannot listen to our own news media because they're the people that, broadly speaking, were asking for it. And they didn't get it. And the government has failed again, blundering ScoMo to the rescue. It was a dumb piece of legislation in the first place. You had to be unbelievably in bed with these media companies just to even consider it let alone stuff like having access to Facebook and Google algorithms 28 days in advance of the rest of the world. Just insanity, and it hasn't worked because Facebook pulled the news. And then the news went, we're losing a fortune every day by not being on Facebook. Can you stop this, please? So the government just backed down. They haven't won anything. They've not won a single concession from Facebook. All of the deals being signed are being signed by media entities in other countries. It had nothing to do with the media bargaining code. And once again, Scott Morrison's judgment, as it has been throughout his tenure in office, has been appalling, and yet he seems to have gotten away with one of the most blundering and embarrassing failures you could possibly have as a government. And once again, trying to put that PR spin on it by saying that they actually won something. You don't win if you threaten to enforce a law against someone. They threaten you back and then you just back down and say you're not going to. But you might in the future. What's that? That doesn't mean anything. This was done beyond belief. And I can't believe that we're now... Our government is actually capable of doing these world-first things. Like throwing Australia under a bus last year with China. And that is still ongoing. And Scott Morrison was about to announce an election before the rape scandal and before the Facebook thing blew up to trade on coronavirus. And he's screwed now. He can't do it. He's on such weak footing. And I guarantee you when he does, that's when um, China will ramp up their attacks on him because they blame him personally for it. And now he's made even more friends with Facebook. He's making an incredible amount of friends, isn't he? For Australia as well. Um, we've, we've annoyed the second largest economy in the world and one of the largest media and ent- two of the largest internet media entities in history, both trillion dollar companies. We've managed to piss off absolutely everyone and we just don't hold our government to account. That level of incompetence needs to be rewarded and it doesn't. They go to the media and say we won, but you lost. <laughs> 